Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 249. I was hoping it would be 250, but these things don't always sync up. What can you do? Of prog review. Oh yeah, and if you haven't, um, if you haven't uh, read the title or description, I'm fiddling, I'm fiddling. If you haven't read the title or description, I'm talking about, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman and Howe, self-titled, there you go. Released on the 20th of June, 1989. Today's the 20th of June. But it's 25 years later, 25 years. Oh, where did the time go? Um, I've been looking forward to doing this one because this is a this is a favourite one of mine. And seeing as it's going to be a, 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 a Yes album out next month, I thought we should uh, get this one in, you know, get some in, as they say. This is probably the last decent Yes album, even though it's not a, a Yes album per se. There's just so much going for this record. Now you've got to remember, cast your mind back to 1989. There was nothing. There was black. It was darkness. There was nothing. The old tumbleweed went by. Yeah, Marillion released a record. But in terms of progressive rock, it was the wilderness years. It really was. And when this came out, it was just such a big thing. I was so excited, and it was so, I'm still excited about it. That you know, you know, I went out and I, and I, and I bought and I bought the, the singles. Look, I bought the singles and I got the CD singles and everything. And I went ABWH bonkers. Um, <clears throat> okay, really, it's it's probably a, a John Anderson side project, but he very cunningly grafted on Bill Bruford and Steve Howe and Rick Wakeman. You know. And they got to record it at the uh, studios in Montserrat before the volcano went boom. And um, it's a really great record. Yeah, there's some there's some schmaltzy bits there that you might not like, and there's some bits that you you might you know you know turn your nose up. But they're still progressive. It's still a very progressive album. Uh, opens up with themes, you know, and. Again, the band kind of lays down its 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 remit where, where it's going. You know, Rick Wakeman doing his thing. Then the drums, the Bill Bruford drums. He's playing the Simmons drums, and they're powerful. Those electronic doobries. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, the eighties. That drum sound. If that doesn't make the the yeah the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, well, well, I I I don't know what will. Um, Again, it's a nice short little song. Leads into Fist of Fire. Again, again, there's some great keyboard playing, great guitar playing. Again, this is when Steve Howe was doing really interesting things on guitar, and you know Rick Wakeman, you know, could really get in the mode. And this is all augmented by, like I said, Bruford's drums, and it's just all going on. It's just all exciting stuff. And we're into like the main song bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm articulate today, aren't I? The, the main slab of song on the record, um, Brother of Mine, or Long Lost Brother of Mine, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's 10 minutes, 18 seconds of pure joy. Yeah, it's a bit cheesy in places, but you know what? It's a, it is a really great song, and I've been listening to it on the album again today, and it's just, you know, took me back, back in time to those heady days when oh, I was a mere... 18 year old and oh dearie dearie um again you know it's um that's a, it's a great track it moves along and you can hear elements of yes in there and you know it's all but it's, it's modern i mean it's, you gotta remember this is a 1980s album but it's still a very modern sound to it and there's some great guitar playing going on it's very very memorable and it goes back to those those fragile you know, days uh, of yes when you know they, they had a an almost pop sensibility going on there. Um, side one um, ends with he says, "I'd rather check my album because I'm sure the I'm sure the running I'm looking at it on Wikipedia, but I'm sure the ends yeah they got Birthright as, as the as the, the fourth track. I forget that one. Now Birthright is a really powerful song on the record because it involves um, atomic bomb tests and we also have like an Australian 
kind of Aborigine kind of sounds on there. It's a very, very powerful track. And it, was, they, it was very good when they, they did it live, if I recall. Again, I quite like that song. Um, very, very good, very, very powerful stuff. Rounded off by The Meeting, which is a, a little ballady type thing. Again, very nice, very sweet. John Anderson's voice is, is superb on this. Again, this album, you really get John Anderson at his best. And, you know, his lyric, lyrics aren't as, you know, as um, out there as usual. You know, they're, 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 they're decent and kind of have an earthly connection rather than floating off. And you turn it over, because we're on the vinyls, and there's a song called Quartet. And it's kind of four songs very <laughs> dubiously glued together. And what I like about it is there's all these references to other Yes songs in there. It's all very clever stuff and it's all very, very amusing. But you can't get away from it. Quartet is four songs glued together. I'm Alive on this, which is like the final part of it, was actually extended into a single, uh, a single mix, which is longer and has an instrumental break. Uh, I think there's there's even a video of it. If you go on the YouTube, you can probably find the video of that out there somewhere, which is really, really, really cool to see. And, and if you keep your eye, you see uh, Mr. Tony Levin swinging a small child around. You don't see that every day in a video. Oh, no. Um, this is followed by uh, uh, Teak Bar. Oh, yeah. Or oh, The Life and Times of Bobby Dredd, where the band Go Calypso, inspired by their time on, on Mozart, uh, they, um, it's again a lot of people don't like it, but <laughs> God damn it, I'm pinning I'm pinning my colours to the mast today. I think it's really good fun, and it's good to hear the band play in a different style. You know, to adopt a calypso kind of feel, and you know also have you know things happening. It's just it's a busy song, but it's good fun, and, and I'm sure a lot of you are just saying, what the f is this guy? Who? Darren Lock, go on, do one for liking that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I like it. I think it's a great song. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good song. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. This is the problem with prog rock, is there's no fun in it. And when bands do have a little bit of fun, and you see this on um, on Tomato with like Circus of Heaven and Arriving UFO, people tend to you know turn their noses up at it. And it's good to see. It's good to see fun on a prog rock album. The penultimate track is Order of the Universe and it's a massive big big football stadium anthem of a song. Order of the Universe. Oh, I love it. It's a great thing. It's a great thing uh, to hear live um, and it's a, it's a really good fun song. Okay, it outlives its welcome. Listen, great hard crunchy rock guitars in there but you know I mean it's just a it is a, it's a, again, it's another great, fun track. And then the album is rounded off by Let's Pretend. Uh, again, it's a lovely little ballad, um, co-authored by Mr. Van Gillis. Because yeah. um, there's various people, like um, Jeff Downs is on, uh, is credited as well, as well as Max Bacon. Um, and so you can see where some of these songs have come from in the careers of Yes and, and that. So... But yeah, uh, let's pretend I really like it. Gets another little uh, track with Anderson and the guitar and a little bit of keyboards, and it's just you know muted, and it's a really brings the album to a really nice ending. What can I say? It's a great album. Uh, ABWH was my first concert that I ever went to with the misses. Well, for my first concert, anyway, she went to she been to concert before me. It was the first gig I ever went to. Um, my story of, of that is, I again, I was a little bit nervous about you know live gigs, and we was at Wembley Arena, it was fairly high up, and I really needed the, the toilet, really needed to go, and I was like, I never, I wasn't used to timing it, you know, you know what it's like, you know, when you're when you're a concert goer now, you think, well, the, the song I don't like, that's when I'll go, but I, I got all my timings wrong, and I was I was bursting, bursting to go, and I decided to go during Heart of the Sunrise. I didn't want to. But I needed to, and as I got up to go down the stairs, someone had spilt like a, a pint of lager on the floor or something, and I slipped. And I don't know if any of you have been to Wembley Arena up the top, the stairs are at an angle, and I went boom, 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 on my bottom, all the way down these stairs, almost to the tune of Heart of the Sunrise. Boom, 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 boom
boom, boom, boom. And I landed in a heap at the bottom of the stairs. Luckily, I didn't break anything. I had a bit of a soggy bottom. And um, and I and luckily, I didn't wet myself as well. That's, I mean, the bottom soggy bottom was because of the larvae, you see. And um, I managed to go to the toilet, but nobody noticed because they were all locked into locked in even the missus didn't see me go <laughs> when i came back I, I, I limped back to my seat she went what's wrong i said oh man i fell down the stairs <laughs> how embarrassing and that was my first gig experience and that is my story of heart of the sunrise and how not to go to the toilet um yes so anyway um the i mean the album i love it i think it's a really good album i can see why a lot of people don't like it because yeah it's a little bit of a it's a little bit john anderson project but You've got to remember when it was. It was 1989, and what I really regret, it's a real shame that they never had another crack at it, that the the second studio lot of tapes weren't taken away and polluted by... I mean, I like Union. I like Union. I know a lot of people don't. I've got a weak spot for it as well because, because of the times and, you know, but it's the potential of what could have been, you know, if the band had carried on without the influence of the studio. And But, yes... Yes, needs money. It always needs money. That's why it always has to tour. That's why it has to discard people. This is why it has to get new people in. This is why we have an album coming out next month with a new singer because you need the money. They need the money and they will always need the money. Um, and that's a great shame that they're a band motivated solely by the financial side of things and don't let them tell you otherwise. Um, but this album, it's a special time, it's a special place, and records should be about a time and a place and a feeling and how you are, and this is a special one for me, so it gets, it gets five fists of fire, five fists of fire, oh yes, and do check it out, well, you, I hope you, you should already know this album, um, and it's, a, you know, it's really, really, really good fun. Um, that's it. Um, I've got a skedaddle, so um, I've done this on the off chance because I realised the date. I thought, oh, better get this one in. 25 years, 25 years of ABWH. Go back to your collection, pull it out, listen to it, and admire what it all means. And with that, my name's been Darren Locke. Only one more thing to say if you can ignore my son who's doing his best to distract me through the door. And that is <laughs> prog on.